Under Arcana has put out another subclass for the Warlock, the Noble Genie. Yes. Um, the idea is that um, Warlocks are now can pick uh, genies yep. um, as their patrons. And I have to say that I love this a lot. Yeah. But I, again, I might be um, biased because I, I love uh, Middle Eastern mythology. I, I grew up watching the, the Sinbad movies. Uh, I love Aladdin. Uh, I've read the One Thousand and One Nights, um, so it's it when I was like when I was much younger, and uh, yeah, I I think this is a lot of fun. I think this is my favorite subclass of what they released so far for twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, because it's it's great. It's it's a lot of it's, a lot of the abilities you have is are are fun. Yeah, they're they're insanely unique. Which like uh, out of all of them, I think they had the most fun making this too. And yeah. I agree. I love the genies for a slightly different reason. Is that each time they make a um. A warlock one it seems like they're hitting a different monster type almost yeah so like they have the aberration version they have like fey version with arch fey and stuff and this is sort of like their elemental version one which i which i really like i love elemental flavors in general but like the fact that you like specifically have like a genie like a dijin or like, like one of the varieties that there are hmm. is super great but also the fact that you have sort of like almost like the genie's lamp but like your own specific item yeah with like the uh collector vessel hmm. um it's just fun flavor. It's just so much fun flavor. Which yeah. like before we were talking about like even with the barbarian and the um, monk, like there's a lot of fun flavor for role playing purposes, and you still get that here. But you get a, a lot of like unique uses in battle and stuff too, with all the, mm-hmm. this like weird stuff too. Uh, any favorite things that have popped out at you so far? Well, wow. Well, let's see. Genius Entertainment. One of the abilities you get at tenth level is uh, amazing. I love the fact you could teleport someone <laughs> away. And um, you could just let, let the dungeon master have fun with that scenario. Oh, I know it's so good. Yeah, I, you know, I I also like protective wish, which you get also at tenth level. And that's the, that's actually the thing that I, I thought was really fun is with warlocks. Really, the only stats that are important to you are charisma, and then usually constitution, maybe dexterity, and like other ones depending on how your build is. But if you have a constitution heavy, like a beefy warlock, you switch in. Maybe you you actually take can take hits mm-hmm. compared to like a wizard or something. So like your wizard's about to get like knocked, and you just switch up. Like nope, it hurts, <laughs> but I survive where the wizard wasn't going to. Like it just there's that fun little flavor there. But, like, the vessels, like, I'm going to read these off because you got oil lamp because Genie and the lamp because they were mm-hmm. like, yeah, we got to keep this. You can have an urn, a ring with a compartment on it, uh, a stoppered bottle, which is my personal favorite just because I really like the idea of that, and then a hollowed out statue or an ornate lantern. Mm. I like stopped bottle because I imagine if, like, you suck in your opponent into there and, like, you pop that cork, the trans like, if you get put to Genie's Entertainment... They're just like in that bottle and like the genie's hand and the mm. genie's just huge over them. And to me, that just that flavor of just being like, oh, what a cute little thing. And then <laughs> they just pop away. Mm. I, I don't know. That, that's like my favorite little like tease. And like there's so many teases here. That's what I feel like a genie is. It's just like all these little tease, like almost wish abilities that you get for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, ve- the vessel itself, like tethering to somebody and then gaining benefits with that person's really awesome if they're within a certain range and they don't die on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, collector's Call is a lot of fun. I mean, you have to wait to 14th level to get it, but yeah. but uh, you could you get, like, healing, you could get cured of diseases, you can you could get all these, like, uh, uh, help from... All these type of different help you can get from Genie, which yeah. I think is really cool. And, again, it's 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 flavorful. And, and you do a lot with that. You really get to play with the patron a little more with this. So, mm-hmm. like, with Hexblade... Like, does anyone, like, really pay attention to what your patron is when you get a Hexblade person? Like, I feel like it's always, like, it's an, it's always, like, an evil weapon or, mm-hmm. like, something with, like, a very specific purpose. But with genies, it's sort of, like, even, like, an archfey almost where, like, it's just, it's just this creature that's having a good time and you just happen to be a part of it. And, like, you want to have fun? All right, you do these entertaining things for me. You bring me some entertainment every once in a while. Sure, I'll give you some stuff. And mm-hmm. that that's what it feels like versus, like, um like fiend where like it's that is a trade and like like a, like almost like monetary to the form to mm. the form to me at least like when you're dealing with fiends or demons or devils or fiends or demons or devils <laughs> they all the same thing they're probably all the same thing i thought they expanded spells that you can get for it uh fit fit the uh subclass well uh, I, I just like it a lot because it's not your it's, it's a, definitely a, a good step away from your contemporary 
thinking of what a warlock can do. Yeah. It's, it's just, I mean, I always hear the warlock jokes that, okay, all they do is like, they just do day damage mm -hmm. uh, constantly. That's it. That's all they're really good for. And this, you could now break that stereotype and yeah. you do so much more with it. Yeah, and then like boons and stuff too. So you can like, you can take unique, the unique boons or the evocations and like really make them work for you here. And like, you got to remember warlocks like only get a certain number of spells. You're getting like two or three spells for most of the time that you play if it's not one of the like evocations that you just get to use i'd love to see some if i was going to ask for something i will want some evocation specifically for the genie kind of mm -hmm. like how they have for the other like hexblade and stuff like that have theirs i would love to see unique uh genie evocations because i think yeah. that'd be really fun yeah i i, I wouldn't mind seeing more i wish they i want them to tinker with this and and do more i would like to see this become so like unique yeah you know uh maybe uh, uh maybe new spells you know um uh we'll see we'll see yeah. hopefully they're listening yeah it'd be good <laughs> so, yeah but like last time we got new spells was the new ones they made for the uh psychic ones that we did before right, yeah. which were were interesting because like they worked really well with the character like if they every time they make a new uh spell sub uh spellcaster subclass like make one new cantrip or even like a first or second level spell like, you don't have to make a new ninth level spell every time, but if you make those small little ones, because most of your game, you're going to be using cantrips, one level, and two level spells. Like, from whatever level you start at, those are the ones you have the most of. So if you can make a good, like, I can't even th think of it, but, like, the tether idea is great, but, yeah. like, think of, like, a, fir a good first level spell that is unique just for them, or, like, an evocation that's unique to them. I don't know. Yeah. So what the tether idea, so they, they understand what we're talking invocation. about. Invocation. I've been saying evocation. That is a wizarding school. Um, <laughs> invocation. The warlock invocations. But what, what are your thoughts about tether? I know we haven't really explained what it is yet. It's one of the other features that you can get on this, where uh, you, can, you can link to uh, usually a companion, mm -hmm. hopefully. Uh, and then you get certain boons from being tethered to them. Yeah, it's got to be a willing creature. So, I mean, granted, if you have, like, a familiar, maybe you could uh, mm. tether to the familiar and just have the familiar not too far away, and that could also be fun. I don't know if I don't know if that would legally work. Again, stuff that needs playtesting needs a yeah. little more raw, like a few mm. more rules and, like, understandings. But, like, maybe if you have a familiar, if you're, like, maybe half ranger, half warlock, and you have a beast companion that you can switch with... Mm. Like, there, there's a lot of fun little uses you could have with it if you're really playing with the game. But maybe you have a love interest. Maybe, like, you and, like, another party member agree that, like, hey, we're, do you want to be, like, a form of a couple? So, mm -hmm. like, you tether with them before battle to keep them safe. So yeah. if they're ever in danger, you're like, nope, ah, I'm taking that hit. And, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of really fun role playing that you get. You get the, uh, what was the benefit to increase your perception check because yeah. you got two people. Basically, I guess it's like you've got two pairs of eyes, which yeah. is great. Um, and then when you cast a spell, you could do it from your location or their location. So yeah, which is amazing. I healing, like yeah. cure wounds or inflict wounds. Like if touching counts, if someone's like tackling your uh, the person, and you just like cast that spell through them, maybe that counts. And that's the thing is like until some of this stuff gets explained more. Like if I cast inflict wounds through the tether to the other person, do they hurt the creature that's holding them? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. No, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm just I'm curious. There's just Little fun things about yeah, it. but I, I like that they're experimenting with this. Yes, I, I, I hope they continue with this. Uh, but before we end this end the segment, bring back Al Kazim. <laughs> uh, it 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 had potential the second edition uh, when it came out, and I haven't never seen it since. And I would love to need to bring that back. So I'm just putting my my voice out there about that, just because I again I love uh, um, uh, uh, Middle Eastern mythology. It's just so rich with so much great stuff and. Uh, I would love, I love them to see do something with that. I love them. To, like, Please, no, no dark sun. Give me Alkazim. I was gonna say you don't want dark sun. Dark sun was literally <laughs> what I was about to reference too. No, um, <laughs> but I don't no. know. Like honestly, if they and the thing is, they even reference in some of the books. They're like, here's the pantheons from different uh, religious uh, mm. experiences from different parts of the world. Give me like a whole thing based off of e each uh, area. Give me a Native American uh, uh, compendium of some sort. Give me a uh, Middle Eastern compendium. Give me an uh, like South Asian I, compendium. I have to double check, but I could have sworn there was a book out for second edition called Legends and Lore that had all of that. had had um, um, uh, South American mythology. had had um, had all sorts. Yeah, Af like African. Like, give me like 
deep uh, like like we know what e- uh Europe is going to be like main Europe but give me eastern Europe give me like the small regions where like very like before Christianity or any of mm-hmm. the big 3 really took over there was those unique little like uh religions that like pr- that could bring out some amazing ideas um, Dude, i'd love to see a non c in this in this game i mean we're, we're going off topic i know I, but i'd love to see inuit like I, like i inuit have such interesting mythologies like um there's some really unique games that are based off of that stuff i would love to see like an inuit based even just sm- a patron like an inuit patron would like Make my soul so yeah. happy. <laughs> All right. Here, here's our random wants. Yeah. <laughs> it's 2020. What are our resolu- revolution, uh, resolutions? We want some really unique, fun stuff from you guys. And honestly, for 2020, you gave us four random archetypes. And yeah. they're, they're all weird and wonderful. I won't lie. Mm. <laughs> all right. Well, well, again, thank you for watching this. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. We're going to go get some dinner. Yeah. We'll see you later. One more thing, actually. Oh, <laughs> One more thing. Tell us in the section what you want to see for the next playtest material coming out. Because we got a monk, we got a paladin, we got a barbarian, we got a warlock. What do you want to see next? Maybe Artificer. They just released Artificer, but do you got some crazy ideas for Artificer? Maybe you want the Mystic class to actually become official. <laughs> 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 but he's right. We're going to go eat. So, see you later. <laughs> right. Take care.